Welcome to the Fusion Artist Studio. As we have done in previous weeks, we're going to be taking a look at arts and accomplishment in Marion. Uh, we will be talking today with folks from Marion Civic Theater. My name is Ed Breen. I'll be your host today, and we will start by introducing the folks that we have as guests today. Tabitha, Tabitha Nice, introduce yourself and we'll move across the room. Thanks for being here, Ed. Um, I might, like you said, my name is Tabitha Nice, and I am the current board president. My name is Kaylee South, and I'll be taking over with Anna as co-presidents next season. My name is Ann Miller, and I will be working with Kaylee as co-president of MCT next season. Tabitha, give us the Reader's Digest version of the backstory. Civic Theater has been a part of the Marian Arts scene for a very long time. Since 1951, when it was originally, um, they just did, it was just the adults, and so it was a very small group, and then they incorporated in 1968. And there has been a season every year for 70 years? Yes. That's pretty amazing. That is. It? Are there other towns that you're aware of, of our size, that have done that well through the years? Um, some of our local, I'm not sure how long Wabash has had their little troop. I don't think it's long, um, but I have seen some, some that are a little bit further away that have been in existence that long, but to, okay. to have 70 years on us in a small community is, is pretty outstanding. And, and it's only, it's a testament to our community and how much support that we get from the community. Have you found anybody who was in the first play? <laughs> no, I haven't. I found some that have been here for quite a while, but... Uh, we ought to we'll see if we can find somebody. We should. Uh, you are all administrators, uh, in one way or another, of the organization. Have you all performed on stage, in one way or another? Yeah, actually, I think we have. Yeah. Is that what drew you to it, initially? Yeah, for me, that's exactly it. Um, I got involved when I lived in Nashville, and then um, I, when I moved back, I, I knew I wanted to stay part of it. I actually did a little bit in high school as well. So, so yeah, that's what drew me, and I fell in love, especially with the behind the scenes, the behind the scenes stuff. So, um, so I wanted to get involved in every way, shape, and form that I could. And the, it's the behind the scenes that is equally important to what's going on at center stage. That's what makes it work. That is correct. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and were you both performers? Yes, I started the year after I graduated college, and I did Susical here, and then wanted to get more involved and to be able to like give my voice to change, and so then I was invited to be on the board, and I said yes. So. What was the first show that you did here? Susical. Oh, okay. Which was, I don't know, five summers ago-ish, six okay. maybe, <laughs> I don't remember. Um, I actually took theater classes at Purdue. That was my first experience with theater. Um, always liked to go to watch um, the theater, uh, but became involved in that way. And then um, once I had children, um, I have six children, and uh, half of them really enjoy uh, being in plays and starring in plays. And so um, I actually accepted the role of Olivia in The Homecoming in the 2018-2019 season and then um, took a place on the board and so I've been uh, involved ever since. Have you also all done directing and producing? I have not been a director. Yeah. And you have? I did. I directed Willy Wonka last summer for the oh. kids. Fun? Oh, it was so much fun. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Tabitha, you've done some directing. Oh, I've done a lot of directing. I've done anything that can be done here, Ed, I have done it. <laughs> okay. Including fixing the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about it. You have a building that uh, I suppose some civic theater groups would, would die to have. It's a big building. Absolutely. Uh, you've done a lot with it. You got money from the Merlin Lowe Trust a year or so ago that allowed you to carpet the floor and do some other things. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about where Civic Theater is now. Uh, financially, artistically, where are we now and where would the three of you individually and collectively like to take it? Um, well, well, 
I can speak to what we've done so far, which is many renovations, and like you said, including new carpet, new lighting. Uh, the lobby uh, reaped the most benefit of the um, renovations. We still have a little bit more to do there. Um, but we also got a little bit more technology as well um, to put into our shows. We, we got a couple of projectors to be able to project on the whole back screen or the whole back wall um, where we usually have mural, murals and things. Um, and we got equipment uh, that to give us uh, better production as far as that goes. Uh, we can now run our lighting through a computer. Um, so just programs, so just lots of updates uh, to kind of keep us in line with, because a lot of what you see on Broadway right now involves technology with performance too. And so we're trying to get uh, get a little bit more into this century, I think. Um, so that's where um, where we are at, we're at right now. And then I will let these ladies talk about where they hope to see it go. Good. Um, I am hopeful that support from the community will continue to come in um, financially and then also in the realm of audience and then also um, volunteers, whether it's on stage or behind the scenes or doing ushering, things like that. Um, we do have a lot of volunteers, a lot of awesome volunteers, and I'd love to see more people even come in and be involved and give their own take on or heart to the theater as well. So. You know, I suppose we ought to tell people, in all fairness, that we are in the theater building in the 500 block of South Washington Street in downtown Marion, east side of Washington Street, the James Dean Theater. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're In Grand County, you're not going to name a theater anything but James <laughs> Dean, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would think that my mission for the theater in the upcoming year would be to continue a legacy of excellence that they have and to be able to, just like Kaylee said, expand to be able to serve more of our community and to give them a love for what we love every day. And so um, we would welcome new people um, into our fold uh, as much as possible. Talk about the selection process for what you put on the stage. I, I think that is an extensive process and it's, it, it is a collaboration of minds. So the board comes together with ideas, we have a play reading committee, um, you know, we decide what would um, be the best for our stage. We try to stick with a theme so that everything ties in together. Um, last season was the 20s, the Roaring 20s, and mm -hmm. that was a fun, um, a, a fun endeavor. Uh, unfortunately, with COVID, we weren't able to complete the entire season, um, but we're hoping to continue um, with the next season as well. Um, and, you know, COVID made such an impact on our theater in the past few months. Um, I'm hoping to, you know, be able to have a lot of the in-house, in-theater plays to have people enjoy us here. We have to talk about COVID. We're, you know, we're, we're all at the point where we are hoping for a parole from all of this <laughs> at some point. Uh, but we have to talk about it, the impact that it's had on you. You had to cancel shows. Mm -hmm. uh, you certainly have taken a financial beating as a result of this. Uh, does it leave you in a situation that's pretty precarious, or are you still solid moving ahead? Well, I will tell you, Ed, that we won't be able to handle much more of this. So we definitely need the community support on this. So anytime we have endeavors to, uh, to do fundraisers, every, even if it's just two bucks, just anything will help us out to, to, help, us, to help sustain us throughout this. Um, so for sure, uh, we're definitely taking advantage of all the digital opportunities that we can, the virtual opportunities that we can, and we may be forced to take advantage of those more often, um, which may include selling tickets to performances. I, who knows? Um, these ladies will have the reins from here on out, and so they'll, uh, along with the board, have to make those calls, but they are hard calls to make because theater is best enjoyed in person, uh, live theater. So, so definitely um, we are going to, uh, to have to rely on the community yet again, um, as we always do, um, to help us get through. But you know what, that's the beauty of it, is that we have all come together and helped each other out. So There I was a time that. when uh, corporate sponsorships pretty much allowed Civic Theater to do whatever it wanted to do. The money was there, the money was coming yeah. in easily. Those days are gone, the corporate 
money is not flowing as freely. It is in not. The it has been increasingly difficult to get um, sponsorship, and in fact, so that we kind of changed our strategy to do um, individual, to do the little amounts, um, trying to get individual. Um, sponsorships from uh, from family and from people who want to support the artists so we've, we've done a different take on that so a lot of sponsorship we get will be in a smaller dollar amount but it it is very difficult and, and and it's probably tough times on a lot of companies right now too and in the past um, so yeah any organizations that want um, to be part of this uh, please let us know please get a hold of us because um, we certainly can use any help that we can get and it certainly is people coming through the turnstile that is important. Mm -hmm. Who buy those tickets one show Absolutely. at a time or buy season tickets. Absolutely. You need those folks. Yes. You do everything modestly around here in terms of, of expenditure. But give me an idea. What does it cost to run Civic Theater for a year? Well, I can tell you on a monthly basis it's about six grand. <laughs> So and so add that up to 12 months and I mean that's the lights that's the especially during the summer months when the electricity is on especially really hot days like this and that's whether somebody's here or not and but that does also include um, you know paying for supplies and for show for shows paying for royalties and rights and things like that so we do recoup some of that through sponsorships but I will tell you that ticket sales alone is not enough to keep this place going. So we so have to you have to have seventy-five thousand dollars a year at least to keep the lights on. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, it, well, a little bit more than that, but yeah. What would you like to put on for the first show coming out of COVID? Well, we actually have our season scheduled um, in August, the beginning of August. It's Great Gatsby will continue. We actually were able to move oh, our to two the canceled 20s, shows. Then. Yeah, um, we were able to move the two shows that we weren't able to do this season into the new season. Um, but it's a cram packed season because we're trying to get as much in as possible to recoup. Um, but uh, every, again, everything is very fluid because we don't know if we'll go back into lockdown or anything if, if the cases rise. So it's very fluid. Um, we're trying to roll with the punches, but uh, the plan is to start the season off with the great Gatsby at the beginning of August. And have you cast Gatsby? Do you know who's it? It's, who's Gatsby? We want to know. <laughs> um, I'll let Kaylee speak on that because she's part of the show, but it's the okay. same cast as originally for those who stayed with it. Um, we did lose several along the way. So uh, Burke Sullivan is playing great Gatsby uh, or Gatsby. And we have had to replace a couple people, um, whether because they moved in this time from when we were originally going to do it to now, or um, they are not comfortable, which is perfectly understandable. Um, so it's been a little bit of a process to recast, but we've been able to find um, enough people. I think we're still looking for maybe one more person um, to recast. So um, for the most part, we've had a lot of people stay on, but it has been a little bit of a process just because, I mean, life changes and sure. time changes and all of that, so. You know, we've talked with visual artists and uh, musician in this series of interviews. Talk for just a minute, and I'd be interested in the opinion from each of you, on what the role of theater is in a small town in the rural Midwest. What, what do we need from theater? And what can we bring to theater? Well, I think any kind of art that you have in a community, especially theater, um, kind of breathes life into a community and um, gives an education in, in a way that no other venue can. Um, to, to teach someone, to, to enfold them into your, into your group and, and to perform on stage, it, it's an education that, that can't be measured. Um, I think that of everything that I have gotten from the theater, it has been those or that influence on my children and my family um, for sure. And um, I think that as we grow a community, you know, giving, giving people that artistic outlet is imperative to happiness. And is there a way that the various arts groups in the community can work together in a more cohesive way to bring success to all of the organizations. Absolutely. In fact, um, 
that's what I'm hoping the Arts Alliance helps us with. Um, and I have already talked, we've already been working with CSA on stuff as far as we, we uh, uh, work together to uh, help each other out with costume needs. Um, we did that in Willy Wonka. Um, so absolutely, we can help each other out. I think we have worked with Indiana Westland um, with costuming needs, things like that, and um, definitely uh, sharing each other's ideas and and just 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 communicating with each other and and even collaborating. I think would be amazing. I would love to see that. What do you need from the community and the from the arts community in the way of support? Well, we How need their talent the for sure. <laughs> um, we definitely need the uh, those those who are artistically talented to, uh, whether it be maybe they are an artist and they can come and help um, create the art that we need for shows. Um, anybody that I mean, to me, a wood worker is an artist as well. So anybody that can come help build sets. Um, but definitely need people to be on stage too. So so from all aspects of that community, we need help from every angle, I would say. Mm -hmm. What have I not asked that I should ask that you still want to talk about? Ladies, do you want to talk about anything coming up or? I, I don't think I have anything additional. <laughs> um, we didn't talk you're about- You're theater people, you're supposed to be prepared <laughs> oh, for that. <laughs> We didn't talk about our Yawak kids, which is our Young Actors with a Cause. They have two shows coming up in this new season. So three. they're three. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Three. Okay. Oh, yes, there's three. Um, so they have lots of opportunities coming up, and it starts right away in October, mm -hmm. I believe, um, with a play for the elementary age. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so look for those to be posted online here soon. Um, and we're actually going to be able to announce the whole season. We have our KT Awards presentation coming up this weekend. Uh, it's 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 going to be all pre-recorded. Um, oh, that's this weekend. That mm -hmm. is this weekend. Okay. It's going to be pre-recorded and posted to be to be able to be viewed on Saturday. And um, it'll it'll announce our all of the shows that we have planned in the new season. And for people who are involved in civic theater, the KT Awards are important. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. It's a measure of success and commitment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Anne, Kaylee, Tabitha, we thank you. We appreciate you. what you do. We need this community to support you. Uh, on behalf of the Fusion Arts Alliance, thanks for watching. We'll be back again with another project, project later on. Thank you.